The story of David and Goliath is found in 1 Samuel 17. Saul is the king over Israel. He's Israel's first king. And David is a handsome young man living at home, out in the fields, tending sheep. He's the youngest of eight sons of Jesse from Bethlehem. Now, David tending sheep is very symbolic for those of us who belong to the Lord. We should be doing whatever the Lord has for us to do, as humble as it may seem. We should do it faithfully until the Lord Lord calls us to something more. Now, at a certain time, the Philistines are drawing up battle lines against Israel's army in the Valley of Elah. And they're taunting Israel every day because they have a champion named Goliath who is almost nine feet tall and he wears a coat of armor that's well over 100 pounds. And all of Israel is terrified of this man, Goliath. Goliath would come out every day for 40 days and taunt the army of Israel saying, send me somebody with the courage to battle me. And nobody in Israel's army had the courage to do so. And one day, Jesse calls David out from the fields, and he sends David to the front lines with food for David's three oldest brothers, who are part of Saul's army. And when David arrives, he hears talk about what King Saul would do for the one who kills Goliath. Saul would give his daughter in marriage great wealth and exempt the family from taxes in Israel for whoever it is that would kill Goliath. And David says, repeat that? What will King Saul do? And he, and it's repeated to him. And Eliab, who is David's oldest brother, he sees David and hears what David's saying, and his anger burns against David. And he gives David a hard time, and David just repeats something and then ignores his brother, basically. And there's symbology in this also. If you're serving the Lord, there is a really good chance that somebody in your immediate family is not going to like that and will be jealous and will not like you for it. So you just need to stand strong and keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do. And so David says, I will fight this uncircumcised Philistine. How dare he defy the army of Israel, the army of the Lord? And so David is brought to King Saul, and David tells King Saul that he will fight Goliath. And, da- and King Saul says, you can't. You're just a little boy. You can't fight this, this man. And David says, yes, I can. When I'm at home tending the sheep out in the fields, and a lion or a bear comes and steals any of the sheep, I go after it, and I attack that lion or bear. And I, re- and I rescue the sheep from its mouth, and when the lion or the bear would turn on me, I would strike the lion or the bear, grab it by its hair, and kill it. So David was fearless. He was not afraid of anything. He had great faith in the Lord, and the Lord always delivered him from it. He said to King Saul that the Lord would deliver the Lord delivered me from the paw of the lion in the bear, and sh- and surely he will also deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. And so Saul puts his armor on David, and David is not comfortable with it. He says, "I cannot wear this. I'm not used to it." And there's another good point there in that we should never look to copy or mimic somebody else. We should always do what the Lord has called us to do and how the Lord has trained us. The Lord is constantly training us up and we should stick to that and never try and copy somebody else. And so David takes the King Saul's armor off and he just takes his sling and five smooth stones And he brought five smooth stones with him against Goliath, just in case there was anybody else that wanted to come against David. David was prepared for more than just Goliath. And so David goes out to the battle lines and confronts Goliath. And Goliath is just appalled and very angry that Israel would send this little kid. Goliath sees that David's just a youth beaming with life and youthfulness. And he says, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. And David is not in the least bit intimidated. 
Now, the devil is constantly lying to us. He is the father of lies, and he will constantly try and intimidate you with his lies. And we are to immediately reject that. And this is what David does. He immediately rejects that and says, oh, yeah? Well, I am going to... I am going to kill you and chop your head off and feed your flesh to the birds of the air. <laughs> and, and so this is what David does. He, a Goliath starts coming towards David, and David immediately starts running towards Goliath, which is more spiritual truth there. We should never think that we need to be on the defensive. The armies of the Lord are on the offensive. Satan is defeated, and we are going to destroy the works of the devil. We're not trying to defend anything. We are advancing. And so David advances towards Goliath, and he takes a stone, and he slings it at Goliath, and the stone is divinely directed by the Holy Spirit and sinks deep into the forehead of the giant Goliath. And Goliath falls face down onto the ground, dead. David runs up to him and takes Goliath's, Goliath's sword from its sheath and chops off Goliath's head. At this point, all the Philistines see this and they're terrified and they all start running away. And then the whole army of Israel is encouraged and start they start to chase the armies of the Philistines and defeat many of them. And so there's, there's great symbology in that also, in that when you are not afraid of the devil in any way, and you go after that enemy, it encourages the rest of the body of Christ. And so be a leader and trust in the Lord, and you'll be helping your brothers and sisters in the body of Christ to also have the courage and go after the enemy and destroy the works of the enemy.